Jimmy Butler believes the Miami Heat will be the first to four in this best of seven series for a ring. The problem is Nikola Jokic of the Denver Nuggets already got game one. Who would win game two in Denver? Max Struess was over from the three-point line in game one. Nails his first attempt in game two of the end. Nikola Jokic with the fine. Aaron Gordon with the flush. But more Struess. He was four of seven from the three-point line in the first quarter. Nuggets got down by nine. Then Denver would turn on a full blitz, an 18-3 run. And by the end of the first quarter, Denver's got the lead back. Second quarter, you see Jamal Murray nailing the three. And then Murray off the steal. It's Murray. Throwing it down, dangerous play from Struess. But how about Jamal conquering his fears and throwing it down anyway? 18 points, 10 assists for Murray. Denver's got an 11 point lead. Jamal this time showing you one of those dimes to Christian Braun for the throwdown. Miami would continue to fight despite blowing their early lead. Butler with the deuce. Here comes more Jokic to Gordon. Nikola, a little now you see me, now you don't. Denver, though, their lead would be cut down to six as we took a break. Third quarter, Jimmy B gets away with going out of bounds on that baseline, finds Gabe Vincent for three. Other end, it's Jokic playing bully ball on whomever Miami threw out in front of him. Chest to chest, man to man is what you put in the gym versus what the best player in the world did. And in game two, I like Jokic's chances to be great. How about Jokic taking it coast to coast? This all a part of an 18 point third quarter. He goes 41, 11 and four for the game, but his nuggets are in a dog fight because of all these threes, Duncan Robinson and Gabe Vincent. And then more Robinson this time, the grown man finish for Duncan. He really set the tone for Miami to kick off the fourth now the Heat are rolling. It's Bam out of Bayou with the midi. And then Butler on the same type of time. And it's Miami up by eight. And out of Bayou throws it down to make it a 10-point lead. He had 21 points, nine rebounds. Denver hasn't lost a home game this entire postseason. Murray said, we trying to keep it that way. He nails another three. And then inside we go. It's the big fella, Nikolai Jokic for show. Denver's down by three, 111-108. Miami had a chance to put this one away, but as you see, Butler's jump shot, no good. Denver's got a chance to tie. Head coach Mike Malone opts to not call a timeout. Murray gets some space. He gets a look, but his three-pointer is no good. And how about that? Despite a great game from Denver's best player, it comes in their first home loss of the postseason. Gabe Vincent had a team out 23. How about Butler 21 and nine? And just like that, this best of seven series in the NBA finals is tied at a game apiece as Miami comes from behind to win this one by three. What's up, everybody? It's yours truly. I'm the one and only. I go by the name of Who's Pharaoh. If you're enjoying this great quality content, thank you first and foremost. But please make sure you hit the subscribe button before you leave the video. I need you. I appreciate you. Thank you so much for the love that you've shown the platform. If you've done so, enjoy the rest of this video. Tom Butler. Butler, a three-pointer. Off the side of the rim. Brown, the rebound. Should the Heat foul here? I'm taking a foul. I'm not allowing them to get off a three. Denver does have a timeout, but they're not using it. Four seconds. Murray, step back. Three-pointer. Long go. Fight for the rebound. Martin. And it's over. The Miami Heat have tied the NBA Finals. What a comeback. Oh, despite both of these teams' players playing incredibly hard for 48 minutes, a lot of the post-game chatter from what I saw was actually about the coaches for each of these teams. Let's start with Denver's Mike Malone. Obviously, the decision to not call a timeout following Butler's miss. You know, Denver had about 12, 15 seconds there to get the ball up court and get a game-time three-point attempt up. They could have went two for one. But, hey, you allow Murray to try to do some action with Jokic, see what Miami gives you. Jimmy Butler actually steps up 
and is just locked in on Murray, it creates uh, Jamal with this pretty much this isolation attempt. He gets a step back three off, actually does a good job of creating some space. It's a shot that he's made countless times in this postseason alone. Me personally, I was fine with Mike Malone's decision. You can't have it both ways. You can't have the best coach in the league when you're winning and the worst coach in the, in the league when you lose. It doesn't work that way. Mike Malone has done a fantastic job this postseason. If I'm him, I'm living with my guy, one of my top two guys, making or missing that shot down the stretch. Now, I will say this. The way Jokic was able to dominate this basketball game, if you call a timeout, most likely – Coach Malone is going to run a quick set for Jokic with them still. It was still double digit seconds left in the game when Denver got that rebound. You probably go quick two for one and put some pressure on Miami to make some very difficult game two free throws on the road to keep their lead at three. You can argue that with the game that Jokic was having. Me personally, I'm fine with the no timeout. Give one of your two top guys a chance to get a, a look up there to tie the game and force OT. I mean, you, there's a bigger conversation to be had that Denver shouldn't have even been in that spot, and we really ain't seen anybody push Denver to that spot in Colorado this entire postseason. Again, that's their first loss in the postseason at home. So give Eric Spolstra and that Miami Heat squad some credit. Now Eric in his postgame presser, he had a pretty snarky, you know, sassy comment responding to ESPN's own Ramona Shelburne, who's pretty much like, yo, do you think it worked in your favor to make Jokic more of a score than it is a passer? For those who don't know, I think the Nuggets are 0-3 when Jokic goes 40 and over in this postseason uh, alone. So Eric pretty much dismissed that question. He didn't like it at all. I don't know what he was trying to do. I think it was like more of a, like a mind game that he's trying to play with the Denver Nuggets, but it, it came off a little snarky. I, I don't, I didn't like it. I, I didn't think, I didn't think Ramona's question was out of the, 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 you know, out of the realm of fairness. I thought it was a fair question. Eric, though, he did a great job coaching his team to a win, and he is one of the better coaches in his league. And right now, he's got his team with home court and a chance to take a commanding three-one series lead as this series shifts back to Miami, and then obviously we'll go back to Denver one-one-one from there on out. Fantastic game. Um, some of the plays that some of the role players were making uh, for Denver throughout this postseason, especially at home, they didn't make in this game, but it, it wasn't because Denver was playing bad or anything. Jokic just had it going. And again, we've only seen Jokic go in the bag of just scoring and pounding the rock, but so many times. To me, Denver's at their best when Jokic hovers around 20, 12, and 12. I mean, they're pretty much unbeatable at that point. When you let Jokic destroy you by himself, but you don't put him on a free throw line, which is what Miami did. They did a great job pretty much of not letting Jokic just destroy them via fouls. They just let him have his way, and he was scoring the rocket an incredible clip. He was phenomenal in that game. He's the best player in the world. But the way Miami did it, you just kind of was like, yo, if Jokic is going to kill us by himself, let him have it. And it worked in Miami's favor. Guys were out of rhythm. Guys that were making those shots. I saw Bruce Brown miss an open look or two that he had been making throughout this postseason. Contavious Caldwell Pope struggled in the second half. He had his first bad half of this postseason, in my opinion, against Miami here in game two. Even Murray missing that shot at the bus, I just think, you know, guys were a little out of rhythm because they were not getting as many looks as they typically do in a game where Jokic dominates more of a point center spot, which he tried to get guys involved in this one. Don't get me wrong, but if if, if he's only going to get four assists, if you're Miami, you probably got to take that. You That dude is probably the best center and best point guard in the league. To hold him to four assists, I don't think Miami has a lot of answers for Denver. Like Denver, like, like like Miami comes out of the gate and hits Denver in the mouth. And by the end of the first quarter, Denver's already gotten the lead back. I don't think Miami has a lot of answers for Denver's offense. But if you've walked and bounced into something accidentally, because Jokic was just killing 
Miami, if you bounced into something accidentally where you say, okay, we can let him get his, Denver's still going to be tough to beat, but there is a way to beat them versus when Jokic is spreading that thing around, 12 assists, 14 assists, 12 rebounds, 24 points. If if Denver's more beatable with Jokic going off, then maybe just maybe that's the formula because right now I don't see anybody beating Denver when they're playing that 12 assist Jokic offense. It just it's just it's just no way to beat them. They're just too good right now. But um I think Miami's bounced into something and now now they got the series tied at 1. At the end of the day Gabe Vincent has been balling out. Jimmy Butler was good in spots in this game. I thought Bam out of Bayou was great in this game and he had to deal with Jokic and Jokic went to work, but Bam just kept fighting and fighting and fighting. And I love the tone set by Max Struess in the first quarter and 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 how Duncan ended this one in the fourth quarter. They needed Miami needed a run after Jokic's phenomenal third quarter. He scores 18 points in the frame. Miami needed to get out to a quick run in the fourth quarter and it was really Duncan Robinson who set the tone with that three and then that deuce at the rim and then Gabe Vincent joined the fun with a three of his own as well. That was really what what hit Denver in the mouth. That was what Denver hadn't seen a lot of this postseason. After a big quarter by their, you know, their guy, Jokic, uh, Miami comes back, you know, and, and doesn't lie down. They come out swinging in the fourth, and it allowed them to do something that no team has done, which is get one in Denver, and now we got a series, ladies and gentlemen. Miami gets one on the road. Series is tied at one. Let me know what you think about game two in the comment section below. I want to thank you guys so much for the time, love, and support. It's what you bought. We'll never take for granted. I'm out.